I've had all these conversations the last 48 hours with like one person after another about how boring their business is. And you know what? Your business probably is boring too. Think about all the little tasks you have, the, the meetings, the checking your calendar, your phone, sending emails, sending those social media messages. It is boring and it's really easy to fall into that trap of thinking that the grass is greener on the other side, that maybe you should be in some other niche or have some other business that is just so exciting and energizes you day in and day out. And then that leads to you self-sabotaging and saying, oh, I need to throw out this business and create a whole nother one and things will be so much better. And the thing of it is that the excitement that you have in your business is what you make it. And so you can choose to be the kind of person that says, well, I choose to be excited about writing copy for this sales letter or checking in uh, on the tasks that my employees are doing. You can choose to be excited about that. And even if you can't, even if you say, you know, I, no matter what I do, uh, you know, going through this customer list I have is the most boring thing that I'm doing right now. Well, that those tasks will then lead you to some level of excitement, right? You, you do the, the things that you know you have to do and you show up because you have integrity and then that leads to your business making money, making a profit, you pay yourself out, then you can afford that grand fancy house or the family vacation and then that is the excitement that it leads you to. So it, really, it is a package deal, right? It's not that your business is boring, it's that it has boring parts which are unavoidable and the goal is not to avoid the boringness it is to make money and for you to to grow and to lead somewhere and the the as i was just kind of driving in the grocery store right now i'm just about to pick a few things up for the family in the middle of the day i was thinking the first step is for you to get started right and there are things that you're neglecting and i say oh well it's been a couple of weeks since i've even sent an email blast to my list the first step is to just take some sort of action and many times you dread something and then when you take action then in the process of doing it you then have fun you realize i spent more time thinking about this thing and dreading it than if i had actually done it and someone's backing up and, and revving their uh, engine in the parking lot here. So you actually go ahead and, and do it and take action and you have fun. But then, the, so step one is taking action. Step two is you get to some level of anger, right? You get to some level of anger of you can't quite always make it work or you're frustrated about that, that CSS code or you, you can't land that client. And if you th imagine if you were driving to the grocery store and you hit a red light at an intersection and you were angry at that red light. How, how little sense does that make when something outside of your control uh, happens and you just get, get angry about it? But at least you getting angry means that you're taking some sort of action. So step one is taking action, step two is getting angry, and then step three is some level of smugness, right? And so uh, I was on a phone call about an hour ago with someone and we were talking about when you send in uh, an audiobook. Uh, there's a lot of little tiny requirements, and a lot of people can't cut it, can't crack it. And uh, I, me and my wife narrate, and we can, uh, and we we're fast with it, and we're good at it. We can just click the button, we can make it work. I mean, even if there are the inevitable hangups, even if uh, Amazon or Audible says, "Hey, you didn't submit the audiobook just right," we go and fix it. And you feel kind of a little little smug, or at least I used to, about saying I have this skill that other people don't. So I feel a little superior, I feel a little high on my horse because I did a better job than someone that is maybe a rookie at this task. And then you do that process, you do enough repetitions until you get to the point where, uh, geez, that was a close call. You get to the point then where the emotion is removed out of it, when the the thought process, the logic is more along the lines of what really matters, right? Uh, does it does it help if you are uh, trying to uh, create that software app? If you uh, if you cause a bunch of drama, a bunch of chaos, right? If you have some some coworker or some customer who just has a bad attitude, and you mirror their bad attitude, or you jump in and you you make things worse. 
does any of that matter? Does that really accomplish anything? It, it, probably, it probably does not even make you feel good. You might think it makes you feel good, but only temporarily. So then that is the, the fourth step. So step four of four is then when you just take action and it's kind of emotionless and it just, it just happens. And when you feel like you just, you have better things to worry about. So that's something to think about. If you are uh, kind of feeling a little, I don't know, bored or, or burnt out as they say, or just feeling like, you know, maybe there is something better that I could or should be doing. Well, maybe there is, but you will never eradicate the some of those boring tasks in your business it's impossible and you shouldn't even be really uh make that your goal to eliminate those things it's just it's part of it clearly you don't want to do a hundred percent boring tasks it's up to you if you're like well maybe half the things i do in my business are kind of boring but necessary and the other half are exciting uh but i think think about that process you're going through uh, of step one is taking action Step two is getting angry or frustrated about it. Step three is being smug about it because now you can do things others can't. And step four is when it's close to being automatic. You don't think about it. You just kind of get some things done and you end up just uh, doing those repetitions and getting better and faster and just things become more automatic and more subconscious in whatever it is that you do. And so this is applied in uh, my two main business, businesses right now. One is called dfypodcast.com. And the goal there is uh, you need to have a social media presence. You need social media content. Uh, you need some friends and some networking. And podcasting is the way to do that. So at dfypodcast.com, what we do is uh, you send us content, right? You record a video on your phone such as this. You can be sitting in your car. No one really cares. What's more important is the advice you give, the words you say. You can send us Zoom recordings if you uh, interview your best clients or uh, your mentors or thought leaders in your industry. You send us this content. And what we do is we post it on the various podcasting platforms uh, and such as, you know, um, Stitcher, uh, Audible, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. We get you set up on these podcasting platforms. Uh, and so that way, when you make one post, it goes everywhere. It dominates all sorts of uh, Google listings. Uh, and then the other aspect of DFY Podcast is we post on your social media accounts so and we cut it up because you have probably come across the situation where you found someone new on TikTok, you found someone new on LinkedIn, on YouTube, different people find, people find you from these different platforms. So we want you to just be yourself, record some cool stuff, record some videos, and me and my team will write podcast show notes for LinkedIn and for your website. And me and my team will cut up your uh, video recording into various clips for Instagram, for TikTok, for LinkedIn. Me and my team will find important quotes that you or your guests said in your video content and we'll post it on LinkedIn, we'll post it on Facebook, we'll post it on Instagram. So that way you just become the content creator and me and my team do all the, the cutting and editing and posting and scheduling and optimizing, et cetera. So that way, uh, these social media accounts that maybe you're not using as much as you should um, just have consistent content, constant content and posts um, from you. So that way, if someone finds you, they don't see that you last posted five months ago. They see that you posted five minutes ago. Uh, and this way you can have a YouTube account that's filled up and has uh, comments and subscribers. This way, you actually make use of that email list. That way, you're relevant in your industry because you're always talking to people and you're networking and you're always finding new people to talk to uh, because you're uh, one of these kind of you know micro influencer type of peoples. And uh, so dfypodcast.com is the way to make that happen. And our second business, which is me and my wife, it's mostly my wife, but sometimes me, is dfy narration.com and it's exactly what it sounds like dfy stands for done for you so dfynarration.com uh, and we narrate audiobooks what does that mean it means that if you have a book on amazon kindle then uh, we can get it onto audible 
we can get it onto Amazon as an audiobook with an extra button on your book listing, and we can get it onto Apple Books as well. And all we need from you is your book manuscript, like the you know Word document or PDF file, and any book that you have already published or about to publish on Amazon, we can also get on Audible for you. That is dfynarration.com. Anyway, some things to chew on, some things to think about. I know your business is hard and frustrating and don't just hang in there or don't just hope that it all works out. Um, you know, get to some action taking and uh, be the one to decide what your emotions will be. Don't let your emotions control you control your emotions, and have fun, and uh, don't sweat the small stuff. Robert Plank, DFI Podcast. Have a wonderful day. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.